Welcome back to Bully Ball, San Francisco 49er podcast. We get another week of free football. And, you know, that's tough to come by in the NFL. Um, two weeks of free football, you can't complain. 49ers dominate the Seahawks and head on to face the Dallas Cowboys this week in Santa Clara. So we're going to dive into all that and more. Stay tuned. Tony Montana, Tony Montana, Tony Montana, check up on my ear. Tony Montana, Tony Montana, Tony Montana, I'm about to cut. Welcome back to Bully Ball, a San Francisco 49er podcast. We came at you guys, I believe, three times during that Seahawks game. We did our pregame primer, we did a halftime report, and we did a, a postgame report. You know, we, we put out a ton of content from before the game, so make sure you check all that stuff out. And, you know, 49ers are moving on, playing the Dallas Cowboys at home. And they are chirping up already. You know, after that Buccaneers game, they're chanting, we want the Niners. We want the Niners. How do you feel about that? Because you know how these fans are. How do, how do how you feel heading into this game? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's one of the oldest rivalries in football. You know, one of the most legendary rivalries in football. Uh, all the NFC Championship games, all the playoff games from the 90s, the 80s. Um, you know, it's kind of been re-sparked as of late. Both teams are doing pretty good in the last couple of years. Obviously, the Niners beat them in the playoffs in the divisional, or is it wild cards? No, wild card. Wild in the card wild actually. card round last year at Dallas, the Niners beat them. And now Dallas will be coming out to Santa Clara to meet the Niners out there. Um, so, you know, the fans are passionate. Of course, they're going to be talking. Our fans are talking. Um, so it'll be interesting. Did you see the Cowboys fan at the Bucks game FaceTiming Debo? Yeah. Yeah. I did see that. That was funny. Yeah. I ain't so, going to lie. All the fans are saying, oh, you better be ready. You better be ready. So we'll see. Should be a fun game for sure. It's going to be a great game. Yeah, and you know, I've been on Twitter and stuff, and you know, all these Dallas fans are already saying, hey, that 49ers defense, they're fraudulent. You know, you could beat them deep. You could run on the edge. Um, they don't really get pressure. You know, how? what is your response to what these Cowboys fans are saying? Uh, you know, it's tough. As of late, I would probably agree because I, I, our defense just, you know, in the first half of the Seahawks game, they are pretty much getting whatever they wanted besides those first two drives that were three and outs. Then after that, they're moving the ball pretty easily. And then all the way up until the Charles Omenahu, uh strip sack, they were moving their down in their territory or in our territory, you know, like the 20-ish yard line or so. So they're moving the ball easily up until that point. And – Cowboys offense is obviously a lot better than the Seahawks offense, that's for sure. So, you know, the Niners defense has to prove themselves and really come out and just show the world that they're still one of the most elite defenses in NFL history. Um, because as of late, you can't, you can't, I'm not going to argue against them saying that the defense is fraudulent. Yeah. And, you know, the big thing is, is it looks like this defense really struggles out of the gate. You know, it feels like maybe the game plan coming in isn't holding up very well and they're just getting taken to the woodshed. And then at halftime, they make that adjustment. They look at the film, the coaches upstairs, you know, they help out, they make the adjustments, they come out and then they start playing a lot better in the second half. But the big news this week is a uh, defensive coordinator, D'Amico Ryan's, has four interviews for head coaching jobs before our game on Sunday. And Kyle Shanahan went on tape and he said, hey, it's going to be difficult to do because you don't have much time to prepare for this game and prepare for those interviews. So he's got to find a way to fit it in because Kyle Shanahan said, when I went through it, they were on, they were the first, no, they were the second seed on the Falcons, but that's when the two seed had a bye. 
So he said I had a full week where I could just, you know, prepare for my interviews. And then I got right back into playoff mode. D'Amico doesn't get that. So do you think that is going to play a part in this game, you know, in this defensive game plan, the scheming, anything like that? I mean, I would hope that he's a little bit more of a professional than to let it affect the actual playoff games because that's what you're really playing for still. You're still in the playoffs. You still have a very good chance of making the Super Bowl. So I'd hope that he's a little bit more of a professional than to let it affect his game plan and get behind on things. And I feel like he is, you know, he seems like he has a good head on him, very respected player, a uh, very respected coach. So I don't think, I mean, I don't like it that he's doing so many interviews this week. You know, I wish he would have like spaced him out a little bit better or waited until after the season, of course, but you know, it doesn't always happen like that, but I don't see it being a problem personally. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we really won't know if it does affect the game plan unless after the game, you know, maybe a player or somebody comes out and says, hey, we weren't prepared or something. But with that being said, one more thing before we we dive deep into this game. Um, you know, 49ers had another person snagged out of the front office. Ran Carthen, if that's how you say his name. Uh, I believe he was the director of Pro personnel, player personnel, something like that, right? Got um, signed as the general manager of the Tennessee Titans last night. And, you know, huge promotion for him. He's going to a great organization, at least from what I see. Um, but that also nets the 49ers two more third-round picks in these next two years. So the 49ers just seem to be racking these picks up, man. And if D'Amico does indeed uh, get elected to be somebody's head coach, that's an extra third-round pick this year and next year, not two. Because if you have two people go in the same year, it's three picks instead of four. So the 49ers would end up with three instead of four. But how do you feel about that in the organization? Yeah, I mean, it's great. It shows you that we're not only putting out great players on the field, but we're also putting out great people from a personnel standpoint. You know, the 49ers are just grooming these guys like like crazy. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty insane looking at it because, you know, Martin Mayhew left, I think, the same year Sala did to go be the GM of the Commanders. Yeah. And obviously Robert Sala left. Then you have Mike McDaniel now being a head coach. Um, and then soon D'Amico Ryans. And then Ron Carthen, you know, so the Kyle Shannon and John Lynch have done a lot of good work in the six years that they've been a part of the 49ers. So it's pretty promising. You know, like I said, they're doing it on both sides from a player standpoint and an actual personnel standpoint. So it's pretty neat. Yeah. Tons and tons of uh, assistant coaches, you know, going with those other coaches to take higher level positions as well. So. You know, you love to see it. The organization organization is thriving, to say the least. Now they just need to complete, you know, everyone's goal, the quest for six, bring home the Super Bowl we've all been waiting for for so long. And they get a chance to advance this week against this Cowboys team that seem, seems to be turning people's heads. You know, ESPN is projecting Dallas to win now. Um and a lot of 49er fans are very scared, thinking we're going to lose. And I don't know all about that. You know, what, what, how do you feel heading into this game? You think the 49ers are going to lose? I'm definitely uneasy about it, you know. Uh, but it's playoff time. I always get a little bit rattled when it comes to the playoffs just because, you know, one bad game, then you're done. That's it. Season's over. Pack it up. You're watching from the couch just like the rest of them. Um, <clears throat> you know, it depends on what team you're going to get to from the Cowboys. Very up and down team. Inconsistent. You have a team that comes out and loses 26-7 to against the Washington Commanders the last game of the year. It's not like Dallas was benching any players. They started everybody. Uh, and then you come back and you 
beat up on Tampa 31 to 14, which obviously I know Tampa's not a great team. The Niners pretty much did the same thing, if not a little bit worse or a little bit better, I guess you could say. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I'm a little worrisome. I'm, but to be honest with you, you know, this is my this might shock some people. I'm a little bit worried about the defense than I am so for the offense. Uh, you know, the defense, like I said, has been looking kind of fraudulent these last couple of weeks, of, you know, the last couple of weeks of the season. And then this last playoff game, for the most part, they've been looking a little fraudulent. So definitely on the edge of my seat for this one. That's for sure. What about you? Yeah, you know, I'm not as worried as most fans. You know, I think it's easy to say the 49ers are fraudulent and they aren't looking as good when they just destroyed, you know, they dropped a 40 burger on the damn Seahawks. Seahawks ain't the best team, but they're a pretty good team. Um, and you know, the Cowboys looked like they played their best game this past week. I don't think the Cowboys could play a better game than that, especially at the quarterback position. That was as flawless of a game you're going to get from Dak Prescott in his career. You know what I mean? And I don't see that happening two weeks in a row. You know, they're a very up and down team and you could look at their schedule and people will say, oh, they beat the Eagles. Well, they beat Gardner Minshew. Oh, but they beat the Bucks. The Bucks can't score points on offense anymore. <laughs> it's just, it is what it is. Who else did they beat? Um, the Bengals. They beat the Bengals. That was in week two. They just, there's nothing on their schedule that really impresses me. But what stands out, they lost to the Jaguars. I know the Jaguars are still in the playoffs. But, you know, they should have been a first round and out team. And then they lost to Sam Howell, like you said. And that's a good defense that they have over there in Washington. We saw it when we played them. But our defense is better. Their defense, I would probably say, is better against the run than ours right now. But overall, I believe our defense is better. And they scored six points on them. So, you know, the 49ers, very physical on defense and offense. I think they control this game. But we're going to jump into our keys on what the 49ers have to do for that to happen. So go ahead and drop your first key to the game from the 49ers. I do want to say uh, one thing. Um you know, same thing could be said about the Niners schedule. You know, who have we really played? You know what I mean? Like the Dolphins, you could say, were probably the best team, but then they fell off, obviously. I mean, they almost beat the Bills last week, but still they lost like a five out of six out of their last games, I believe. Uh, you could say Tampa Bay, but look, Tampa Bay just got trashed in the first round. You could say it, the Chargers, but the Chargers just gave up a 27 point lead and they were out without Mike Williams and Keenan Allen in that game. So, you know, same could be said about the 49ers schedule, but getting into the keys to victory, you know, I ended up, I ended up having a lot actually. So I have to cut some of these down, but I'm going to start on the defensive side of the ball. These aren't in order necessarily. These are just key general keys. These aren't like, Oh, the first key is the most important. This one is pretty important. Um, so my first key to victory against the Cowboys is contain the run game, specifically uh, Pollard with his with the explosives. So don't let Pollard get to the edge and break off some long 20, 30-yard run, you know, anything more than that. Like you have to contain him, keep him inside the tackles, and force it back to your inside help. Uh, you don't want – you know, we have some of the better hitting corners in the league, but still you don't want a corner open field with Tony Pollard because of his speed and just his agility. You know, he's a ex super explosive running back. So you got to contain him and can't give up the big run. Yeah, and I, I definitely agree with that. I would say this is probably the best O-line the 49ers are going to play this year. Um Left tackle Jason Peters suffered an injury to his hip 
against the Bucks, and he's probably not going to play uh, as of right now. We'll find out more later in the week. But still, you know, that Buccaneers uh, D-line has a ton of talent on it, and they got absolutely no pressure. You know, they were not stopping the run at all either. And the 49ers have been good against the run this year, but we've seen the cracks. We've seen, like, a the, the run defense is vulnerable. You know, one of these games, it's going to crack. And last week, it did look like it was starting to crack before the 49ers turned it around. So I definitely agree with that key to this game. They have to stand tough and stout against the run. I might give you my next one. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So yeah, I next- didn't write any down. I'm just going to jump off of yours and go oh, with the way okay. you're talking about. Uh, my next key, staying on the defensive side of the ball, is we have have to get more pressure than the last game. Bosa needs to have a defensive player of the year caliber type game. You know, you're playing against the other defensive player of the year candidate in Micah Parsons. Um, so you need to outperform him. But in general, the 49ers need a lot from Bosa and the supporting cast because – if you can get pressure on Dak, he's going to fold. He's going to throw picks. You know, he – I think he either led the league or was tied for the, lead, for the lead in most interceptions thrown this year. And he missed five games. He missed five games and led the league in interceptions or at least was tied for the lead. So you have to get him off schedule, have to get him uncomfortable. You know, even if you're getting some pressure, make sure you get hands on Dak. You know what I mean? Make sure you rough him up a little bit. Uh, just got to rattle him. If you get him out of position, you know, he's uncomfortable, you're going to get picks. And if the Niners lead, I'm calling it now. Obviously, it's easy to call. It's not like I'm calling a huge shot. But if the Niners win the turnover differential, they're going to win the game. I think we're undefeated when we lead in the turnover di- differential. So if we if we can – lead in the turnover differential we're going to win the game yeah and i totally agree nick vosa zero pressures last week against the seahawks and that was surprising because we know those rookie tackles on the seahawks are good but nick vosa obliterated them um the last regular season meeting that they played he just destroyed them took them both to the woodshed and they locked his ass down this week. And we've said it all season. You know, Nick Bosa doesn't get pressure. 49ers O-line don't get much pressure. Oh, I mean D-line, sorry. Um, you know, Charles O'Manahue, Eric Armstead stepped up a bit. But you're getting nothing from that other edge spot. And you really need something there. You know, we talked about it. Maybe you bring Drake Jackson up. He isn't getting pressure. But at least he's trying to swap balls. You know what I mean? Maybe give Jordan Willis some more reps. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so Jason Peters goes down. It looks like rookie left tackle Tyler Smith will be probably starting this week for the Cowboys. So hopefully that is a position that the 49ers can exploit. I heard in a broadcast against the Bucs that he's been playing pretty good this year. He's kind of like a swing guy, though. He's played like – I think he's played reps at almost every position on the O-line. So Yeah, I'm pretty sure when uh, Peters got hurt, they said they were moving Tyler Smith from, like, guard yeah. to tackle and then moving something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, moving on, my next one is staying on the defensive side of the ball as well is – um. Fred Warner and Dre Greenlaw have to match up well with Dalton Schultz. You know, Dalton Schultz looks to be Dak Prescott's number one target. You know, that's like almost like Dak's safety blanket. If the folds, if the play is breaking down, Dak's going to look towards Schultz. So Fred, Dre, you know, Hufanga, Gibson, whoever's on him, needs to play sticky coverage on him, you know, and not let him make any off-schedule plays as well. Because, like I said, that seems to be his number one target and his safety blanket. Because I in that Bucks game, he had a lot of receptions. And Dak was looking his way very often. So if uh, 
Fred and Dre can lock him down, then it's going to be a long game for Dak. Yeah, and I agree with you. Um, you had mentioned Dak Prescott. So on the season, he had 23 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. Jesus. Yeah, so that's Dak's sure. stats. But I agree with the uh, Dalton Schultz thing. He was looking his way often. And they were kind of getting him open the same way the 49ers have been getting exposed the past couple of weeks against tight ends. They would have him chip, <laughs> stay in like he's blocking. And then once the DN commits, the linebacker gets out of place and then he would go out on a route and be open. And the 49ers have been struggling against that concept lately. I don't know what the problem is, but definitely something they need to address before this game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, from this last game against the Bucks, Dalton Schultz had seven receptions for 95 yards and two touchdowns. He had eight targets. Uh, Dak Prescott had 33 attempts. So if my math is right, uh, Dak Prescott targeted Dalton Schultz over a little bit over 20% of the time on his throws. Um, so... You have to stay sticky on Dalton Schultz, and you cannot allow Dalton, Dalton Schultz to beat you. You know, you know, and I feel like the Niners match up well against him because we have one of the best, it, I'm the best cover linebacker in the NFL, in the NFL in Fred Warner. Um, so I feel like we match up well against Dalton Schultz. Uh, let's see. Moving on to offense now. Uh, Hold on, I got one more. Oh, go I got one more I wanted to throw in. The 49ers defensive line needs to maintain its rushing lanes this week. You know, when you're – Dak Prescott is not the most mobile guy in the world, but, you know, he can beat you. He can run inside. He can run outside. He can scramble. Um, and, you know, last year the 49ers got lucky when the, they beat the Dallas Cowboys – it was on a Dak Prescott scramble, and then they just weren't able to get the ball clocked in time to get a field goal off. Or, I mean, actually, no, not to get a field goal off. They still needed a touchdown. But my point is um, the 49ers haven't been maintaining rush lanes at all this season. We've seen multiple quarterbacks take off and get tons of yards just because somebody, whether it be the edge rusher or an interior D lineman lose their gap responsibility and leave a wide open hole for the quarterback to run. And Jerry Jones went on the media today and said, you're going to see triple threat J Dak this week. He's going to be running all over the 49ers. Something like that. He said something like that, but I agree. 49ers need to maintain their rushing lanes this week. Definitely. Another thing that kind of, this was a little bit off topic from the keys, but one thing that kind of worries me a little bit is just the like the narrative of this game, the storylines of it. You know, the Niners go into Dallas last year, knocked off the number one scoring offense at home, big upset. Um, you know, the Cowboys are seeking revenge now this year. And then if they win, you know, it'll be a – match up in the NFC East again, Cowboys versus Eagles or Cowboys versus Giants. So like the storylines, I think that's just my superstitious side of me coming out. And was, that's what's making me a little bit worried as well. Just the storylines of it. So that was, I don't know, that just popped in my head, but yeah. Um, So back to the keys. The first one on offense is you have to keep Brock Purdy clean. You cannot allow... Micah Parsons to game wreck. Uh, you got to contain Micah Parsons, whether that's chipping him, uh, you know, double teaming him if you have to. But you cannot allow Micah Parsons to get one on one with Mike McGlinchey. You know, that cannot happen, uh, at least not very often. I'm sure Mike can hold up every now and again, but he's going to need help. Micah Parsons, great player, obviously the second player in, in the running for defense player of the year. So you cannot allow Micah Parsons to game wreck and just beat up on Brock Purdy because they have a pretty good defensive line. Who's their other – Demarcus Lawrence, I believe. Is their yeah, other Demarcus DM. Lawrence. Yeah, he's also good. So 
They also had another guy I was watching that was pretty Oza, good. Oza Odigazawa. Maybe. <laughs> he had like and eight and a half sacks, right? Or nine sacks or something. Uh, I don't know what he had this past year, but he's a D tackle, but he looked – he had four sacks this year. Somebody on their team had eight and a half with tied. Uh, but yeah, you have to keep Brock clean. You can't let him get pressure. Uh, they did a great job last game of doing it, so hopefully they can continue that into this game. And don't let Micah Parsons game wreck. Oh, Dorrance Armstrong. Yeah, that guy. He was getting nicked yeah. up. He went down a couple times in that Bucks game. Yeah, tons, tons of talent on that defense, you know. Tons of people with four-plus sacks on that defense. You have Sam Williams. Uh, I don't know how many Demarcus Lawrence had. Six on the season. Sam Williams, four. Ozo Digazawa had 4.5. Dorrance Armstrong, 8.5. However many Micah Parsons had. Um, Dante Fowler, six. They just – they're – they're kind of like what the 49ers were when they had a good pass rush, if I'm being 100% honest with you. Um, just everybody can rotate in and get pressure. So I agree. You got to keep you got to keep them off Brock. You know, you got to keep that pocket clean because you do not want Brock Purdy to get frazzled like he did in the first half last week. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, Kyle Shanahan kind of touched on that too. He said, like, yeah, Brock was a little bit, you know, overhyped. So we had to kind of calm him down. And they ran like 10, pla- pa- 10 run plays in the first 15 plays of the second half. So Cal Shannon did a good job of identifying that and adjusting to it last game. Um, next one, staying on offense, is same thing from last week. You see how good it worked out is get Debo rolling. Playoff Debo. You need playoff Debo in this game. Uh, his versatility. He had a great game against them last year in the wild card. He's going to need it again this week. Um, so, yeah, get De- just get Debo the ball any way you can. Screens, slants, uh, tosses, you know, from the running back position. Whatever you can, get Debo the ball and get Debo rolling. If Debo's rolling, this offense is going to hit on all cylinders and put up another 30-plus point game if Debo can get moving. Yeah, I totally agree. You got to get Debo going. And I believe the Cowboys, I believe they are the worst team in the NFL against wide receiver twos, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, Brandon Ayuk cooked their ass last year. We need Brandon Ayuk to cook their ass again this year. All of the... Dallas Cowboys DBs are huge. They're all like 6'2 plus. Um, So, you know, you got to use the speed, separation, get open. You don't want tight windows for Brock to throw into this week. Um, Starting strong safety, J. Ron Curse has a sprained ankle. So we'll see if he plays this week. But, you know, they're very opportunistic. Trayvon Diggs, you know, he's going to go after the ball if you go at him. So... Yeah, I I totally agree with you. So good thing you kind of touched on it. Um, My next key is get Brandon Ayuk on Trayvon Diggs. You know, I know that might be a bold take, but Brandon Ayuk destroyed Trayvon Diggs uh, last year. Just his route running, you know, Trayvon Diggs is going to get aggressive and try to jump routes to get picks. Brandon Ayuk is great at selling out, you know, selling those fake slants and then turning up field or even fake curls turning upfield. And, you know, Trayvon Diggs is going to be chomping at the bit to jump over and get a pick to turn the game. You know, if we can take advantage of that and hit him deep, even if he's not trying to jump routes, I still think Brandon Ayuk with his route running can expose Trayvon Diggs. Um, So that's a big matchup for me. And I think if we can do that, you know, if we can get Ayuk to get on Trayvon Diggs and, we could probably hit him deep a couple times, to be honest with you, or even just beat him by pure route running because Brandon Ayuk's one of the best in the league, in my opinion. So getting Brandon Ayuk on Trayvon Diggs, big key for me. Yeah. In a quarter of uh, the 49ers' passes last week against the Seahawks, I believe they threw the ball 33 times. A quarter of those, 
the wide receiver, the wide receiver that caught the ball had five plus yards of separation. So we need to see more of that this week. Yeah, definitely. Next key, this is kind of more of a uh, a team key is. Well, I'll jump to that one. That one will be the last key. Uh, so my next key is going to be capitalize on what the defense gives you. You know, Brock Purdy kind of struggled with that last week. Um, the first play that obviously is going to jump at everybody's head is the one where Debo was coming across the field and he tries to throw the post to Brandon Ayuk. A lot of people like the play and they like the decision making because if Brandon Ayuk would have kept running his route, probably wouldn't have been a touchdown. But at the same time, Debo Samuel's wide open and an easy first down, first down plus. Um, you know, there's a couple of other, other plays where some guys were open. So just take what the defense gives you. You know what I mean? Brock Purdy, obviously, is going to make plays. And then there's going to be times where he's trying to make plays and might get sacked, you know, might tur- almost turn it over or something. Like I said, last week, you got to live and die by that sword. So you can't complain if he's trying to make plays and bad things happen because we had a quarterback last year, you know, that couldn't make any plays at all by himself. And the team was not very successful when it came down to the crunch time. So, uh, but capitalizing on what the defense gives you, that's a big key for me. Yeah. And, you know, I think this week the 49ers are really going to struggle to flip the script. You know, the 49ers have been throwing the hell out of the ball every single week. And this is the week that you're going to want to run the ball because they have such good pass rushers that we mentioned that you kind of, you kind of want that Jimmy Garoppolo game plan. You know, I know it's tempting to throw the ball 30 plus times, but we've seen you can bully the Cowboys defense. So you need to play some bully ball. You need to run over, run down these dudes necks and then use that to open up the play action and get your wide open receivers running down the field. Um, so, yeah. Yep. My final key here is, like I said, it's a team key. You got to start fast and finish. You cannot have a lackadaisical first half like you did against the Seahawks. This Cowboys offense a lot more potent. If they're having a good game, they're a lot more potent. They'll put up a lot of points fast. So you have to start fast and finish. You cannot start slow and get behind the ball. You don't want to be playing from behind because then that changes the whole game script. You know, especially for a rookie quarterback. Um, so you got to jump out fast. Got to maintain a lead. You got to score touchdowns. It's a big key too. Scoring touchdowns, not field goals, because this Cowboys offense will score touchdowns. So you have to score touchdowns early and often, and then, yeah, might as well get the win. <clears throat> yeah, I totally agree. You know, you start slow and you let Dak get his footing then he's going to be firing all th- on all cylinders throughout the whole game, just like he did this past week. You know, you rattle them early, and that's when you start getting pick sixes and the dude starts choking and throwing bad passes and stuff. So you got to start fast on defense, and on offense you got to start fast because if you get behind, that's when these pass rushers can start teeing off on you because they know you need to throw the ball. So... I totally agree. You have to start fast on both sides of the ball, not just one. And I'll throw in one extra key to the game. If you guys watched this Cowboys game last week, you saw Brett Maher miss four extra points in that game. You know, you need to get him frazzled right away. You know, if he has a field goal early, maybe you call a timeout, try to throw him off. Um, get him off his game, and you need to win that special teams battle. We cannot miss any kicks. We need good returns from Ray Ray, which we've seen, you know, all season, and kick the fucking ball out of the end zone on kickoff. I'm so sick of the 49ers letting them return the ball because I know they want to stop them on the 20, but most of the time you stop them on the 30 or 35. And one of these days are going to break one. And I think you're playing an all-pro returner. I'm pretty sure Kevontae Turpin was all-pro this year as a returner. 
Do not kick him the ball this week. Please. Yeah, I agree. That makes no sense to me why we don't – why we – keep it in bounds. Like, I don't know if we're trying to just do like directional kicks, you know, like that's what it looks like. We're trying to do directional kicks. Like, all right, kick to the left. Everybody swarm the ball to the left. When you do that, the right's wide open. If somebody has the speed to get it out there. It's going to be a touchdown. But yeah, I think, uh, I think Ray Ray McLeod, I'm going to call it Ray Ray McLeod's going to get a return touchdown this game. I think, you know, I've been preaching it for the last few weeks. He's been super close. I think he's finally going to get his one this week. I love it. I love to see it. Um, do you think that we see a bounce back from Charvarius Ward this week on CD Lamb? <clears throat> it's cur- I, don't, I don't know. I'm curious. I wonder if he'll be shadowing CD. Do you think he'll be shadowing him, or do you think he'll just be playing his side? I don't know, because I think, you know, Diamo had that good week last week, so maybe they're like, oh, no, we don't need to shadow him, but I would shadow him. You know what I mean? The rest of the Cowboys receivers don't do much for me. You know, Noah Brown, Michael Gallup, T.Y. Hilton. If they beat you, they beat you. I don't give a damn. You know what I mean? Uh, But I would shadow him, but I don't know if they will. I don't think they will. Yeah. I think he will have a bounce-back game, though. You know – DK Metcalf's a great receiver. Um, he just made plays on the ball. You know what I mean? There's not much to it. I think, but I think he will have a bounce back and he'll get right on this game for sure. Yeah, I hope so. So now let's jump over to our bully of the week prediction this week. And if you guys don't know, our bully of the week this past week, we did the poll for you guys. And it did come down to Debo Samuel and Brock Purdy, but Brock Purdy won out. Yeah. Um, so our dad, bully of the week prediction is Brandon Ayuk. You know, that's who I was going to go with, but I'll let him have this one. Uh, obviously, like I said, that was one of my big keys to victory is getting Brandon Ayuk on Trayvon Diggs. So I think mm-hmm. Brandon Ayuk, I think he's a great candidate for bully of the week, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's our dad's prediction. My prediction, though, is going to be my guy who should have won it last week, Debo Samuel, bully of the week this week. Like I said, that was another key is getting Debo rolling as well, no matter what it is, running back snaps, screens, slants, uh, drags, whatever. Just get him the ball and let him make plays because you know he's going to be running through defenders. You know, it seems like now that we've gotten into the playoffs – that he's really turned it on another level. Um, and I think he's going to have a great game. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, oof, I'll go bold. I'm going to say a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown from Debo this week. Uh, I don't know. I don't know about the rushing <laughs> touchdown because we don't use him in the red zone anymore. It's really like Elijah Mitchell. So I'll say two receiving touchdowns, two receiving touchdowns for Debo. I like it. Yeah, I was going to say Debo or maybe a running back because I said we need to bully them. Um, you know, it's I could go with an O-lineman, but that's kind of hard to pick an O-lineman. Um, Eric Armstead is my honorable mention because he said it himself. He turns it up in the playoffs, and he does it every year. He's just – he don't get sacks during the regular season and then the playoffs come and he turns into a whole different beast. Um, so that's my honorable mention, but I'm going with a dude that was bully of the week, probably three times in a row early in the season. And then he fell off Talanoa Hufanga. You know, you need a big game in run support, stopping those outside runs with a Tony Pollard, like you said, Probably going to see him rush off the edge a bit, you know, try to get around, get a sack or two. And then, you know, Dak be throwing picks, and it's usually the safeties. So I I could see him getting a pick six this week. I need to see, you know, one of those staffed uh, stuff stat sheets this week from Talano Hufanga. That's my bully of the week. Yeah, that's a good one. The Niners could definitely use it, you know. We've been waiting on a bounce back game from him for sure. I think 
one of us has at least mentioned Talano Hufanga for Bully of the Week like the past four weeks. So hopefully this week it could come true and he can finally bounce back and be that bully that he was like weeks one through nine. So Niners could definitely use it too, like you said. Yeah, and uh, if you want to give a score prediction, you could go ahead and do that. I ain't doing it. Why? Because when I say the 49ers are going to score 40 points, they score like 10. Yeah. And then when I say they're going to score like 10, they score like 40. So I ain't giving a score prediction, but I will say I think the 49ers win. Maybe it's a close game. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I agree. I won't give a score prediction because, like you said, when we give score predictions, they end up going way off, and we end up getting – yeah, no. But, yeah, I think uh, I think the Cowboys win. Just kidding. The 49ers win. Uh, I think it will be a close game, but I think the Niners will pull it out at the end. Yeah, that's – you love to see it, you know. We hope the 49ers get another week of free football. You know, the season is down to the wire. You could be done after this Sunday. So we hope that they could pull out the win, give us an extra week of football. Back-to-back years of NFC Championship games. Hopefully this time we can make it past this one if we get there, knock on wood. Most definitely. You got anything else for the people? Nope. Uh, As usual, we'll probably be going – live about an hour before the game. So tune into that. I'll be at work. So I'm going to be watching the game at work in my office. You know, I'm still going to be turning up though. Still going to be turning up rooting for them boys. Like I always do. Um, But tune in for that pregame primer about an hour before the game. Yep. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for liking, subscribing, and tuning in to all of our live streams. We appreciate you. Go check out our TikTok. We made a new TikTok. Um, I think it's at SF Bully Ball Podcast or something like that. Uh, So go check out the TikTok. I think our Instagram, we're going to get our Instagram back up and running. So go check that out too. And our Twitter, of course. Yep, we appreciate it. See you guys next time.